Hey guys, this is Nitro, and I'm going to show you how to bore sight the AGM-65 Deltas and how I like to employ them. First things first, you should always try to make your workload easier pre-flight if you can. For example, I know I'm going to have to bore sight the Mavericks on a building, so when I'm planning the flight, I always make sure that steer point number 2 is over a small town or structure, for example a nuclear power plant, on the way to the target area. But why is that helpful, you ask? Because that means that as soon as I take off, I can reference steer point number 2, hit cursor 0 on the TGP, and immediately it's over a group of buildings, which I can easily slew it to, saving a lot of slewing around time. Once your normal ramp start is done, the first step is to align your Mavericks. For this, go to your ICP, press the AG button, then DMS right to cycle your right MFD pages to store management systems, then press OSB7 to begin aligning your Mavericks. Make sure you also turn on your TGP as it takes a few minutes for both to be up and running. Continue then with your normal taxi and takeoff procedures. You can see as soon as I take off, my Mavericks are aligned and ready to be used. I turn them off as soon as I can, because the Mavericks power is limited to 1 hour without video and 30 minutes with video on any one flight. If you do not intend to fire them immediately after bore sighting, you should power them off Hammer, as soon two, as reasonably airborne, possible. Three ship, F-16s, 1,000. Hammer, 2, Kunasan, departure, depart heading, 355, five. resume on navigation. Here, I press Hammer, the two, ICP two, Next way. button to select steer point number 2. You can cycle between the UHF radio, VHF radio and the steer points with the up arrow or down arrow on the ICP. I can already see through my head mounted plane Three, system airborne. where steer point number 2 is located. Now it's as simple as flying the jet there. As you can see on my left MFD, without much hassle, my targeting pod is already slewed over the buildings at steer point number 2. Hammer, 2 3, on my way. I will engage autopilot just to make it easier to pay attention to the MFD screens. Now, I'll begin the bore setting procedure. Select a distinct building so it's easier to see with the Maverick Seeker, which has much worse resolution than your TGP. Cycle your right MFD to the SMS page with the DMS right key. Power on the Mavericks, then cycle again to the WPN weapon page. You can see that the Maverick Seeker still has no image. That's because we have the Master Arm off. At this stage, we can use both Master Arm on or simulate to activate the Seeker head. Because I haven't fenced in yet, I switched to simulate. Now, we can see what the seeker sees. To cycle between which MFD is soy, press 
DMS down. You can differentiate between which MFD is the sensor of interest by looking at which one has a yellow rim around it. The sensor of interest dictates which MFD your HOTES inputs will affect. I chose this tall building to bore sight at because I can easily see it on both the TGP and the Seeker. Slew your TGP to the building and press TMS up until it gets designated as an IR point. Press DMS down and do the same on the Seeker. As you can see on the weapon page, on OSB20 there's now a boresight option. Click on it. At this point we have boresighted our left rack of AGMs, as you can see highlighted in yellow, Station 3. Now we have to boresight Station 7. Press OSB10 or Missile Step button to cycle your racks and highlight Station 7. Now repeat the same procedure. Here make note of the flashing cross on the seeker head as it will be important for later. Now that both your racks are bore sighted to the TGP, turn off the Mavericks as soon as possible to conserve battery life. If you didn't manage to bore sight, make use of the ground mapping capability of your FCR. Search for a group of buildings in your flight path, lock them up with TMS up, then press DMS left to cycle between the FCR and the TGP and bore sight as soon as possible. That concludes the bore sighting procedures and tutorial. Now I'll show you how to do an attack run with the Mavericks in a relative safe way for beginners. Now that I'm arriving at the target area, because we don't have any pre-planned targets, we're gonna try to find targets of opportunity and shoot them down in a safe way. Of course there are limitations to the Mavericks range and effectiveness, and they shouldn't be employed against long-range SAMs or short-range SAMs within their maximum engagement zones. I'd advise you to also be careful with low-level AAA, although you should never be close enough to get shot at by it. Remember, the FCR is our best friend. The TGP is only to complement the FCR and shouldn't be used as the main way to find targets you don't already know are there. The F-16's FCR is really advanced and has both a ground mapping mode and a ground moving target mode. It also has a C mode, but we will disregard that for now. On the FCR screen in the left MFD, click on OSB1, followed by OSB7. This activates GMT mode, which will detect moving units on the ground. Right away, we can spot a white patch on the FCR. Those are units that are moving on the ground around steer point 3. Let's lock them up in the FCR and press DMS left to watch them on the TGP. Immediately we can see what appears to be tanks or APCs moving near the city. Press the pinky switch once to switch from wide to narrow view and proceed to zoom in to ID the targets. You can see how I zoom in or out to look for the juiciest targets. For the sake of this tutorial I'm going after this random APC. Although you should always prioritize between the biggest threats, highest value targets and low value targets accordingly. You can see on the TGP that we're still at 18 miles from the target. Depending on the speed, the Mavericks have a range of roughly 8 miles. At this time, I power up the Maverick Seeker and fence in. Mavericks usually can't be shot in level flight. You should always try to attack the target on a shallow dive between 2.5 and 10 degrees. You can see that I have the target locked, but the seeker isn't tracking. That's because I locked them before having the Maverick on. I press TMS up again on the TGP and the Maverick automatically slows itself 
and begins the handoff. As soon as the handoff is finished and we're in range, the last step is to wait for the little white cross on the seeker head to stop blinking. Once the cross goes solid, press and hold the pickle button. Rifle. Quickly slew the TGP to another target and repeat the same procedures. The last step of the attack run is to quickly do a 180 degree turn and disengage, fall back to a safe position and gain some altitude. I like to have at least 15 miles of separation between me and the target, then turn back in and engage again. You can keep track of the distance with your TGP. The reason we do this is to minimize exposure to any SAM threat and minimize the amount of time we might get exposed for. If you imagine a threat circle, if we attack from any given azimuth, as long as we don't fly through the center, there's no shorter path to escape the threat circle than the one we came through. As an example, I shot this Maverick with the white cross purposefully blinking, indicating that the Seeker wasn't Rifle. within parameters. Let's see what happened. Chaff, flare, chaff, flare, ha chaff, flare, chaff, flare, chaff, flare, altitude, altitude. As predictable, the Maverick didn't track and went dead. Alright guys, thank you for watching. I hope this helped someone. If you have any questions or corrections, please post them uh, down below in the comment section. I'm happy to be wrong and I'm always willing to learn. And happy flying!